Welcome back to another episode of Owen Talks. Drum Corps, we are in episode 12, ladies and gentlemen. That is a dozen for you right there. The Drum Corps season is over, but the podcast is not. Today, I have a very, very special guest that I've been looking forward to doing this podcast with. So let's get right into it. My guest today is our first guest to have marched drum corps during his high school years. He is a current senior for the Cedar Park Timberwolf High School Marching Man and marched with the Phantom Regiment during this past season, that being his rookie year for the production Mind as Euphonia. He also is the owner of the very popular band at its account BOA Beat. Please welcome my guest today, Jackson Kendrick. Thank you so much, Owen. It's a pleasure. Yes, being sir. Here. Um, yeah, my name is Jackson, and uh, I marched Phantom Regiment this summer as a rookie, uh, and I own the very popular BYB account, as he said. Uh, it's it's going great. It's going really fun. Uh, really fun summer. It was awesome, man. Yeah, dude. That's yeah. what's up, dude. Well, let's get right into it. Any right. any favorite thing you did this past uh, season? Any location, food, or maybe a show or rehearsal, any of that? Oh, man. Um Probably when we got to Texas tour, yeah. like <laughs> probably getting back home to my home state and getting to perform in the Alamo Dome as like a, like not a high schooler anymore. It felt weird because like um, I always do it as like high school, but then finally doing it as drum corps. Like I remember me and my friend, uh, like me and a couple of my friends who marched in Alamo Dome previously were like, yeah, man, it's good to be back. Like it's good to be back, but it's, it was drum corps. So it, it was weird like seeing like a different environment from the from the Alamo Dome to uh, to the uh, from drum corps to marching band, it felt it was like a completely different environment. Cause like marching band, it's like your final year, it's your last time ever. Like it's the end of the road. Like you're getting ready to just uh, go all out on that last um, step into uh, getting your season over. And then for drum corps, your season's like you still got more stuff to barely do. Barely starting. Oh yeah, you're like halfway. <laughs> you're, you're like that's like the halfway point. You still got a whole season you got swamp tour you got to go all the way back up to Indy again and then finish in indianapolis so it's been it's really cool man to just see how those things compare it was yeah. awesome nice how was the i guess a little bit talking about that how was the difference like what's one major thing you noticed between like let's say your your state finals run compared to your run for for uh phantom i mean right off the bat like uh with drum corps um it's like it, it's obviously um, a way bigger, it's more popular than like a marching band from a high school thing. So it was way, way more crowded like than a high school. Cause normally in the high school ones, like people are filling up the stands, but it's only maybe to like the 30 yard lines on each side. And, but, but then for drum corps, you got like everything pulled up in the Alamo Dome. And so that was like the first thing uh, another thing was like um, just warm ups, especially warm up the warm up room because the drum corps it's so loud. Mm -hmm. Like I had to literally bring a pair of earplugs, and I was like the only one, but I wanted to keep my ears because like with you and the horn line in a little conference room under the Alamo Dome, those are insanely oh, small. Oh, it gets so loud, and you got J D Shaw in there, <laughs> like the brass caption head, just like, and we're doing like full out. Um, stuff in the conference room and we're going and we're like playing super loud and like if i didn't have those earplugs man i think, think i would have gone deaf or something bro it was it was crazy dude yeah if in uh i mean i don't know how it goes for you but i remember when we warmed up in those rooms it was like so compact so small oh yeah and it gets so loud so quickly oh you're I can only across the floors and everything yeah i can only imagine with a drum corps oh, oh yeah <laughs> man. insane bro it's awesome man that's cool though that's cool well, any cool stories uh, other than, uh, I guess, your time with Phantom? Like any off days or um, any cool memories that you would like to keep for the rest of your life? I mean, yeah, man. Um, after, like, San Antonio and uh, stuff, like, I remember we did, uh, like, our final rehearsal um, out in Indy. And it was just really cool because, like, when you were doing it, like, um, they had, like, like a, the, a whole high school marching band join us because they were doing their own camp for it because it was in like uh, the beginning of like when summer band was starting up. So um, that was really cool to see like 
they got to watch our last run ever and it was really emotional for like everybody but it was also like a celebration too so that was something that was really awesome just getting to perform uh, and then obviously um, everyone's like doing their GoPro runs and everyone's like having a great time. But um, yeah, um, I think another memory was also the food. The food at Phantom is so good. Uh, it was it was really good. It wasn't like PB and J's every day. Like we had they, they had so many good different meals. It was awesome, dude. It was really good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I do have to ask because for the past, actually every single but like yeah everybody from the past episodes has either mentioned a cool memory from San Antonio or from a beach. Do you have either of those? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. everybody has mentioned either one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for San Antonio, we went to the River Rock. Um, I got to hang out with my um, friend Adam McIntosh, who runs the Dank BOA Memes account. Hey. I got to hang out with him and his girlfriend, and we just uh, walked around, and we went to the River Rock. We, um, I saw Marching Things. Um, I hanged out with them for a little bit. And then uh, it was just cool because, like, all those cores are, like, all having a free day at the same time. So you get to, like, find all your friends from different cores and just hang out together. Um, but, yeah, um, I think the best thing was, like, just getting to see all these faces of people I haven't seen all summer. And just getting to spend quality time with them. Like, we went to the Alamo. We walked around at the Alamo. Um, and then we also, uh, I think another memory, too was uh, we went to the Mall of America. And so oh, me and a few trumpet players, we did a full out escape room and it was so cool. <laughs> and like, cause like we like got trapped in prison cells and like we had to escape and it was so cool. <laughs> and then obviously the next day back to drum corps, but it was really fun. Those are some really good memories of mine. Nice, nice man. Nice. Well, I do have a, uh, one more question of your time during Phantom Management. Yeah. What was your favorite thing about Mind the Show itself? Um, I know Gabe has talked about, like, on the podcast, he talked about, like, the concepts and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but was there any anything from the uniforms to the music to the choreography to the visuals, anything? Uh, what was your favorite thing about Mind? Honestly, I just loved the closer, and I loved uh, playing the brass feature. Because, like, being a low brass person, like, you don't normally get something as technical as that. Like, to play 16th notes for, like, two whole lines of music. And so getting to do that um, was something that was really special because like I, I've never experienced that before. So getting to do that for the first time with the drum corps um, was really special. But also the closer. I mean, everyone's seen the closer. I mean, it's it's viral. Um, it, doing the Z pull. I mean, just working on every, all of those dots it took so long because of how like you had to watch your side to sides and get from dot to dot. But I mean, the music in that closer is just so good because it's all, it's like, you're like, oh, something's coming, something's coming. And then they drop it and it's just bam. And you're going all out and it's, and then you look up when you're done and then you just see the giant Lucas Oil logo in the sky. And that oh, was yeah. so good. I, that's what I love a lot about mine, man. It's just nice. all the music and then the uniforms, man. I mean, they were, the pants, the white pants, they were, they got some new white pants this year and they were like, they were so airflowy and they were so comfy and I just loved them so much. But yeah, those are some really good things I liked about mind. Nice. Good. Good. That's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. Well, um, I guess a little bit on the transition from high school to drum corps. Um, what was, how did you feel uh, being welcomed to a world-class drum corps such as Phantom Regiment um, on your, in your rookie year? Drum yeah. Um, so the audition camps themselves, um, it was really welcoming. Uh, everyone was really happy to be there. It was like kind of sh it was kind of like surprising how welcome everyone was. Everyone was like really opening arms, and it wasn't it like oh you don't know what you're doing? Uh, just follow what he's doing. Like people were so kind, helpful. They wanted to make you just have your best time there and to get as good as you could on everything. But um, when we uh started going on tour, that's when like um. They didn't really see me as like a rookie. They just saw me as an equal compared to everybody. So they treated everyone the same, like regardless of where I'm coming from or how many years I've marched in a drum corps, they treated everyone the same. So that's what something I thought was really special about Phantom is that no matter if you've marched eight years of drum corps or you've marched not even a full season and you've just only done high school, they're going to treat you the same as everyone else and they're going to treat you fair and equal. And that's something that's really special about them. Nice, yeah. nice. How was the... How was the switch per se like um i mean obviously we were talking about earlier like a little bit of 
the difference between the Alamo Dome when you're in high school and when you're in drum corps. Mm-hmm. But other than that, how was the the transition from obviously probably harder music, harder drill? Uh, how was that transition? Um, so at my high school, we use more of a form concept. And so when at Phantom, like Phantom uses dot or die. And so if you don't hit your dot, you're wrong. Like they don't say like, like, make sure you're in line with this person behind you. They don't say follow the form. Like you hit your dot or you're wrong. And so that was what something that like came at me really fast when we started learning drill was um, like they wanted you to have a dot book. They wanted you to know your mid set, your left to right, your side to side. They don't care about what anyone else is doing. It's just going from point A to point B. And so from high school, um, normally it's just like, here's your drill. Um, know your side to sides a little bit and then just like go from here to there and just memorize the relationship of everyone else around you. But from Phantom, it's like, nah, you got to know these numbers and know where you're going. Um, so that was something that came at me like really fast in the process of learning drill, uh, especially um, during like spring training. Um, and then also like spring training in drum corps from summer band, it's way harder. Um, like if, if anyone is going to do drum corps, I highly suggest you go to the gym, um, start lifting weights, start running uh, in the gym on a treadmill because it will, it will help you so much because um, those, got, those guys are going to push you really hard. And so it's not like um, you can just go out and uh, like sit out. They're going to, because everyone, I don't think anyone sat out once during spring training. Uh, like during throughout the day unless they were like sick or they like threw up or something or they like rolled their ankle obviously but like no one was able to sit out if they were like just tired like they had to keep going and so um and also it helps for because you're marching like a 13 minute show and in high school it's like an eight minute show and so with all those like five extra minutes or six um it was like uh, way harder, but it was it's it's worth it. It's so much worth it because looking back on all those things in process um, and how well you do from going through the struggles of oh my gosh I can't hold my horn for more than five minutes to looking at the end of the season where you're like wow I just like marched a whole fourteen minute ish show and yeah, yeah and so, so that's something that is really different compared to high school. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. cool, man. Um, what's something you would like to say to anyone uh, that's trying to join a drum corps, um, a world-class drum corps at that, uh, who's still at that high school level? What would you say to them? What, what's something um, you would like to say to them? Um, just take, when you're auditioning, just take one step at a time. Um, don't say, oh my gosh, I can't play this thing right now. Just work on it slowly and work on one thing at a time. Um, like just maybe schedule one day for saying, oh, I'll work on visual this day. And then the next day I'll go do some um, playing of my audition packet. And so going from high school to drum corps, I mean, um, just go in with open arms. Like if you march a really high level high school marching band, um, the worst thing you could do is probably like that I had to, that I saw from past people is that some people would like go in there and like be like, oh, I marched, like, let's just use my school, like Cedar Park High School, for example. And then they'll say, like, I'm better than you because I marched a, like, high school band that won state. Like, no, don't do that. Like, um, and then just, like, ask for help. Like, if you have a Facebook page that people are auditioning in, like, post videos, get feedback. Like, it's really helpful from staff because they'll, they'll see that you're working and they'll see that you're trying. And at the end of the day, um, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. It just matters how much work you put into it. So if you're not even in college and you're just like maybe taking a buy year off or something, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. They want to help you succeed. And that's something that's really cool. And I think that goes back a little bit to like you were saying, not like me, I'm putting everything together of what you were saying, um, treating everyone equal. Yeah. Um, that goes at that of how like you were saying, like doesn't matter if you marched all these years of state doesn't matter in high school doesn't matter if you were an Austin musician like maybe like your visual can have some work um, all those things sound like it's kind of what what the vibe is there yeah um, and I'm assuming that's what it is for most drum corps as well because at the end of the day these drum corps are looking for the best not just musicians but performers exactly um, yeah so I think that's a that's a big that's a big positive thing uh, mm-hmm. for high schoolers 
um, to be encouraged about. Because at the end of the day, like I was saying, your band may have never gone to state, but if you are putting in the hard work to perform, to learn your music, to learn your dance, to learn your choreo, all those things, I think you can, I think that's a very like positive thing. Like it's most likely um, that the staff notices that, you know? Oh yeah. Um, and, and that they're encouraged to give you a spot or an alternate or give you a, a callback at least maybe for next year. If, if it doesn't, if it's not enough for, for this year, maybe for next year, um, all those things I think it's are good things that are encouraged for high school level yeah, of course. Um, members and whatnot, which is cool. That's, that, that's cool that it's not impossible. Clearly no. we have an example right here. It's not yeah. impossible. It's not impossible. So, so yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, man. Um, I do have a question. How did you get into drum corps? What got you into drum corps? What was the first show you saw live? All those things. Man, the first shows I saw live is I went to a camp called Bands of America BOA Blast at UNT. Wait, was that actually your first camp? Yeah. For, <laughs> that was the first time I ever saw drum corps live. And so that's where I met Owen. Uh, he was there with me, and he had some of his friends from uh, his high school. And so I went there because I was like, Man, I like drum corps. Like, I want to see what it's like. I want to try doing this. And so it was just a one-day camp, and we marched with Crown. Uh, there's a whole vlog. Uh, shout out to Owen on his YouTube. You can go look, check it out. Um, but man, that was that was the first time I ever saw a drum corps live. Um, and I remember after we performed with Crown, we went to the stands together, and then we uh, we were all sitting in like the very top left of this of the stadium. And then me and Owen were like, this is boring. We're not going to go here. And so we just left and then went down to where the, the walkway is in between the top bleachers and bottom bleachers. And we just leaned against the fence and got absolutely destroyed by Crown's mellophone section and the Blue Coats low brass section. And it was so fun. I, and then I was like, yep, I want to do that. And so then literally two days later, I went to... Uh, DCI Southwestern Championship in the Alamo Dome and saw them again for the first time, plus a ton of more cores. So, I mean, that was really cool. Uh, getting to see a ton of cores all at once. I loved it. I did not know that was your first one. Yeah, it That's was. Wild. It was my very first one. But the first time I ever saw a drum core, like, ever, um, I think it was, I saw uh, probably a ton of people can relate to this, a Blue Devils Metamorph video from 2017. Just on YouTube, it popped up somewhere. And I'm like, I, at first I thought it was a high school marching band. I'm like, what? I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, well, that was high school. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, how are these trumpets playing so high? Like, how are they doing all this? And then like the obviously the trumpet soloist just playing his heart out. It was just so cool. But yeah, that's that's how I saw John Corps for the first time, and I was like, yep, I want to do that. And then I just took off from there. Didn't care what anyone thought, and I just worked on myself, and now I'm here. Yeah. Dang, I, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know that, that was actually uh, how it came about, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, that, that was the first time we met. That's cool. That's cool. Um, I do have. This is a random question, but because I had this moment, I'm not sure if you did. But did you ever have a like, either um, a um, a song or a music uh, feature of a core or a core just in specific or lots, um, a moment where you were like, yo. That's awesome. Did you ever have that? Yeah, it was. And what was it? <laughs> yeah, that was when I saw, I think probably when I first saw Phantom, we were low to the ground. So I got to see like, you know, Ben Stone on his trombone playing cool. Um, but the thing that made me go like, man, I want to do Phantom is because we were in the Alamo Dome and we were the very first row on the top. Um, and so we had the gate and it was just we were the very first row in the front on the top row of bleachers. And so I got to see all the forms and everything. And when they, when Phantom did their company front um, for their show, it was just so, it, it made me, like, my friends started crying because of the mellows, because that opening, that, that rip that they do, and then they just push forward into the audience and go all forward, and then they just start playing all these chords, and it was so beautiful. And I was like, Yep, I want to do that. And so I was like, Phantom, hands down, was my favorite show of the year um, in 2023. And that was like, that was what made me want to do Phantom. And I was like, there was also a uh, mellophone player, Aust shout out Austin Walbezer. Uh He goes to UNT right now. Uh, in this, he's majoring in music. Um, 
he got to March Phantom in 23, and then in 24, he went to the Boston Crusaders. So when I saw him do it, I'm like, okay, if someone from my high school can do it, I can do it. So then I bought the packet, asked, and I asked him for help, and then that's what got me to one of March Phantom. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, man. Because uh, I remember that year, you were like, at least in DC at Denton, you were going crazy for blue coats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was wondering, I was like, dang, did he like blue coats more or phantom more that year? But you said phantom, so yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, this is another random question, but now that you've marched uh, drum corps, they do march bent leg, and you did march straight leg, or you still do uh, march straight leg yeah. for high school. Which one do you like better? Okay, so <laughs> learning bent leg was probably the hardest thing ever. It was so hard because I I was so bad at it because going from straight to bent leg, it is so hard. If you're going to do bent leg for a drum corps and you're doing a straight, work on that first because it takes so long, for me at least, to master the technique and like ask for feedback because I thought I was clean and I was not clean. There were some things I needed to work on, but... Um, I remember just going on the band pad with Austin, man, and I shout out Andrew McCarthy. Um, he got he marched two years of Guardians or one year, sorry, and then did Scouts uh, this season. And he marched bent leg, and he was at my school, and so he's he was only a sophomore. And so him and Austin, ma mainly Andrew though, we would go out on the band pad sometimes after school in the spring. Uh, for my callback audition and we would work on uh, bent leg technique and then we would uh, obviously I would submit videos for feedback get help from staff um, and just re-watch their technique videos if they if a drum corps sends you a technique video just re-watch it multiple times like look closely at how they're asking you to march the technique um, and that could even go for if you're doing a core like blue coats, they may not march the exact same technique they do. It could be a little bit more relaxed, and that could be something that's very like critical to an audition thing, because um, it could come down to you're not marching it right, and then everyone else is, and then you're just the oddball out. But um, yeah, just ask for feedback when you're learning new things, and just get help, and it will help you so much in the long run. Nice and yeah piece of advice to anyone looking at that. Yeah, so which one do you like better? Man, I like bent leg better. <laughs> it's it's so much more relaxed and you don't have to like walk so so lift up really tall and like walk really uh, stiff with your legs and tall. Um, but yeah, I mean that's just that's I love bent leg so much more. Um, it just it it's just so much more relaxed and everything. Yeah, dude, there's so much uh not controversy, but like so many people are like like the people who march straight leg, they're like no bent leg sucks, it, it looks so bad, this and that, right? And the people who aren't straight leg are like no straight leg sucks, this and that, right? And I don't know, I like to play devil's advocate on on a lot of things. And yeah. I, obviously, like I came from a high school who marches bent leg. And I've been marching straight leg for Green Brigade Marshman here at UNT, and yeah. I. Still Still like bent leg more. Yeah, that's what so, I'm saying. So I don't know, but again, that's just me because I started in bent leg, so I don't know if that's a thing. But I know everybody, everybody is on that. Why don't we make that the question of the week? We'll make that the question of the week. Yeah. Do you like straight leg or bent leg more? A lot of, I mean, most people march straight leg, so I feel like there's gonna be a lot of straight leg people. But for those who march bent leg, I mean, everyone get everyone gets a vote, but especially those who march bent leg, or march bent leg before or or after either. What do you think? Do you like straight leg more or bent leg more? We'll make that the question of the week. If you are still tuning in to this episode, make sure to comment that either on the Instagram post for this episode, YouTube on the comment section down below, or the Spotify. All right, well, moving on a little bit here. Um, I guess I guess you talked about a little bit what led your choice to marching with Phantom Regiment, correct? With um, you, you seeing um, the Mass Southwestern Championships and stuff. Um, it brings me to a point that I wanted to ask. Do you think it's important for somebody who is looking to join the drum corps world to go check them out in person? Um, what, what kind of video should they watch? Um, what, what's your recommendation for somebody who's like, they know what it is, but they maybe have, uh, have uh, like not a lot, a lot knowledge of the activity and what it entails of? Yeah, uh, definitely if you can, go watch live. Um, because you'll get to see like how every drum corps is a little bit different and how they're all special from, compared to the other ones. Like, 
Um, and then also, uh, if you're going to audition, like, look at the camps. Look and see where they are. Like, see where they're going. Like, see if any of them are near you. Because um, I know if you live in, like, California, but you want to march all age, um, it's not really an option because they're, like, in New Jersey. So, but if you really want to do drum corps, um, just look out. Look, see where they are. And then also... Ask alumni, ask members, current members, like what it's like to be there, what it's like to do it, and then um, just get some like feedback from them and see what their experience was like. And so you, every drum corps has a different culture. They all work differently. They all have the same. Um, they might have the same like technique or something, but all in all, every drum corps is different in their own un unique way, and that's what makes them all special. So if you see like a bunch of shows from a drum corps that you really like. Go live, because maybe you'll see another drum corps like I did. Like, I'm more Phantom, but I was obsessed with blue coats. And so... Um, <laughs> I can't insist to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the blue coats. I, lo I love their shows from 2016, 17, like, till all of those great shows. But when I saw Phantom live at... Uh, it just brought me to that special part in that ballad from Exogenesis that just made me go like, man, dude... They just look so cool. And I hear a lot of positive things from them, from alumni that I've asked questions about. And so I um, just thought it was going to be a great experience. And also read on their websites. Like they put info out about like how their drum corps works. So like, and they talk about like how their culture is there. And then also go to camps. Like you'll learn about their culture at the camp. And so then you'll find out, oh, well, like I love this drum corps. And then maybe you go into the camp and then you come out and like, okay, maybe that wasn't as much as I expected. Or, like, um, maybe you go in saying, I don't know if I like this drum corps, but I'm going to just try it out. And you go, come out going, like, man, this drum corps is so cool. Like, I love their culture. They're so well. And so that's what happened with Phantom is I walked in, not really knowing what to expect, but I was just given open arms and so much kindness. And it was just so awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, joining drum corps... It can be either or. I think it depends a little bit on your past experience and uh, I guess your knowledge of, of uh, the activity itself. Yeah. But I think it's something, it's one of those activities where it's more of the long run game than, like let's say it, it's more of a, I don't know, a cross country race rather than a sprint. Really. Yeah, it's not a sprint, it's a mile run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's one of those things where um, I guess this adds a little bit to what we were talking about earlier with high school level um, members. Um, maybe you don't, maybe you don't get accepted into the core, the dream core you wanted to the first year, but you at least went to the camp. You at least learned the packet, and and you got feedback, and you got feedback for next year. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then especially like uh, like you were saying, if you haven't attended any live shows, I think that's a big one. Oh yeah, that's like a really big one because there's a whole difference between videos and uh in person oh yeah positive and negative both but they it's a it's a big difference i would say um so anyone i think that's looking to join the drum corps world i think that's one thing that they should look at yeah um i can i can i mean i can attest to the camps thing um going to different camps everyone has a different vibe uh every staff um every the members um even like if like if you're really being picky, which you should be, because you are spending a lot of money oh, yeah. for three months of, of of like a summer camp, whatever. Yeah. Um. Like even the food, like how or how people treat you, um, uh, like even like first impressions. Yeah, those are some really big factors, and then also like, um, just going out and like even if you don't make your dream core, keep trying. There's more cores that are around that want you. And then if you don't make a core, ask the core that you didn't make to send your feedback and to send your like stuff in the notes that they took to another drum core. Like I know people who didn't make Phantom, but they sent all Phantom sent their stuff to the Colts and then they instantly got a spot at the Colts without like they just got full ride, full contract. And because they saw their feedback and like, man, this guy is perfect. I love this guy. Let's give him a spot. Let's give him a shot. And so d keep trying and just don't let up. I'm, if you don't make your best drum corps that you want to, there's a home for you somewhere, and people want you. So just always keep that in mind. Yeah, I think that's a good thing to add on, uh, on, on like, 
how it's well one it's like kind of not like everyone every, every core is looking for people yeah um dang i lost my train of thought basically it, meaning in that like you're saying if phantom doesn't accept you or if luke coach doesn't accept you or any of these cores don't accept you um the staff like i think a lot of people know this but maybe some people who don't the drum core world and the band world is like this like everybody knows each other oh yeah and so if person x from phantom regiment sees a person or, or a member trying out and they're like oh you know what like maybe maybe they're not the the, the fit here but i think i know exactly who would want them connection a or connection x going to connection a over here mm -hmm. and that's a straight path to to success like you were saying yeah exactly um because yeah a lot of uh i don't I, I know this but i don't know if a lot of people do um the drum corps world is so is so small everyone knows each other um so is the band world the marching band world um yeah so definitely don't i think it, it's one of those things don't give up on uh on what your goal is obviously but if another path opens up, you know, that's something you could take. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Alrighty. Well, as we wrap up the episode soon here, I wanted to ask, um, what's one thing you're looking forward to next year? Um, either the show itself, um, any new experiences, anything that maybe you didn't, you didn't get to do this past year that you're like, Oh, I wish I would have done, but maybe you get to do it next year. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm just really getting forward to like, um, just performing. Although I, that's what I love. I love going to shows so much. Just like the crowd and just performing in the full uniform, and that's something that is just really special. Cause, I mean, just watching those people stand up as you do your closer or like something in the show. I mean, that's just something that's really special and it's awesome. Nice, nice. That's cool, man. Um, already, I wanted to ask, what are three pieces of advice you would give to somebody? Um, again, who's looking to join Drunk World. I know we've been talking a little bit here and there yeah. um, about the things, but any three specific things that you would um, like to tell anyone? I mean, maybe not even like what you're saying. We were talking about the high school level, but um, anyone, college level, high school level. Yeah, I mean, if you're in high school and um, you buy the packet, it's going to feel weird um, if you like stay after a band rehearsal because um, people might look at you funny and be like, what is this guy doing? Um, that's I've got I've gotten looks from a lot of people like being like okay why is Jackson staying out of rehearsal, and after rehearsal and so um, if you're doing high school um, like my band directors like didn't want me to do drum corps they they wanted me to stay another year um, and they said like I don't I think it's best if you don't do it and I was really bummed because I really wanted to do drum corps and then I realized like. This is my life. I can do whatever I want. And so, like, I'm like, these guys can't tell me I can't march, like, drum corps. And so, like, I bought the packet, and then I just worked on myself. And there were people who, like, Andrew, who supported me. But then there was people who were always constantly questioning me. And so I just, like, kind of tuned them out, and I just didn't focus on them. And I was just doing my own thing. And it brought me to phantom and that is something that's really special like just don't care what anybody thinks about you it, no it's like it might seem awkward at sometimes if you stay out of rehearsal or you show up early in the morning before school wherever you're going just don't make it hurt you and just find your passion and just keep going um for a few other things i mean something that's really good is to have like a daily routine like what i would do is i was always like saying okay this week, I'm going to work on my visual stuff, and I'm going to, like, work on going through the motions of learning dr the drill that they wanted me to learn, and then over the week, slowly bump up the tempo and slowly work on getting better at it. Just don't rush into it, because if you go slow, it's going to help you in the long run. It's going to be really helpful. Um, and then a big thing is money. Um, I know, like, a lot, that's, like, a big thing, like, with college and high school and people not having enough money. Um, the best thing that I can say is to start saving now. Start in the off season. Start saving now because it's going to help so much if you don't and then you wait until, like, you officially get contracted and then you start saving money. If you start saving now, it's going to help so much in the long run because you all have money already saved away. Um, another thing is getting a job. 
or what I would do with my family is I had a job and then I would work and then I made an agreement with my parents that I would split the cost. So if Phantom was $5,600, I would only pay half of that and we would pay 50-50. And so that's what I did for my first uh, season of Jump Corps. But those are some things that I would recommend for anyone to, no matter where you're coming from, just, just to look at those things and check them out. Yeah, and I think if y'all have any other questions, I think your page, your Discord is set up. Um, for, yeah. Yeah, BOA Beats Discord. If you need a link to that, um, I believe that is in your Instagram somewhere. Yep. Um, he has a bunch of resources um, on that. I think you could probably speak a little bit more on me, uh, more than me on that. But resources for, uh, for like he said, for um, financial stuff, um, packets. Um, and obviously, there's a bunch of people in there that want to talk to you. So I think that's a that's a good plug. <laughs> yeah. 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 I have I have channels of helping people like balance time with drum core or money. Um, and I want to help you audition. I have a, I have all these packet links that for uh, drum cores that you can find. And then if you don't uh, really if you're struggling, just shoot me a DM and I can help you out. And uh, you can do it on my personal. Uh, it's Jackson. Dot, it's uh, Kendrick. Dot eight nine nine. Uh, or you could just shoot me. I would prefer though if you shop shoot me on a BOA Beats, my public one. Uh, it's BOA underscore uh, Beat. It's on Instagram. And uh, yeah, just check me out. Shoot me a DM or join my Discord. It's in my link in my bio, and I would love to help you out. So just let me know. Yeah, yeah, man. All right, it well, was. We wrap up this episode. I did want to ask. Did you want to shout out any um, any uh, any people that just helped you out during these past uh, few years with your journey uh, into the drum corps world? Yeah, um, I'd love to shout out um, Andrew McCarthy for helping me out, Austin Walbezer, um, and Aaron Owens. He was the uh, steering wheel guy from Blue Coats, uh, Ribs and Revelations. He would sit on the chair and hold the steering wheel. In 2021, he, um, I had like the hardest spot uh, for my drill, and I had to expand a giant eye set, and I was marching backwards at like a, an angle, and it was really hard. And that man helped me so much with getting to that spot and it's and learning the drill and so it was a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff with me but he really helped me and so that's that also was a big reason of why I wanted to do drum corps because he made me want to do it because of how awesome that guy was and he helped me out so much nice yeah shout out to them and one of those people will be coming on the podcast soon so you have to wait for that yeah. But yeah, alrighty. Well, we'll leave you at that. Um, like you were saying, uh, I don't know. I guess you'll, I'll let you speak on this. Uh, you want to plug your socials one more time? Yeah. So uh, just DM me at BOAB uh, on Instagram uh, and just join my Discord if you need any help and I'll, I can help you out. Yeah. Go follow me on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> follow me on TikTok. But yeah. Alrighty, guys. Well, we'll leave you at that um, as well as going to follow BOAB on Instagram. Uh, go follow Owen Talks Drum Corps on Instagram and on YouTube. That is Owen Does Band Things, um, as well as Spotify. That is Owen Talks Drum Corps. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to another podcast. We will catch you next week. Peace.